Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Information Capture, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, We'll explore the most common compression techniques and formats used when managing information, including a bunch for documents and another group for images. This knowledge is vital to helping you determine which formats are best suited for the purposes you have in mind, since some are of better or worse quality than others, or are more or less web-friendly. Compression is a way to reduce content storage and bandwidth requirements, thereby reducing the need for storage space, enabling faster transmission, and even creating a whole new market, as the MP3 format did for portable music players. The process entails using specific encoding schemes that use fewer bits or other information-bearing units to encode information that's then used by unencoded representations. Some schemes are reversible, so that the original data can be reconstructed. This is called lossless compression. This is opposed to other schemes that accept some loss of data in order to achieve higher compression. These, unsurprisingly, are called lossy. In an age when sending email attachments is as natural as posting a letter used to be, the idea of zipping a file to make it smaller is fairly well understood. But it's important to remember what's happening with your files, because compression can reduce the quality of your content or introduce errors that could prove to be catastrophic or open the door to legal challenges if it introduces questions regarding the integrity of ownership. And especially on an enterprise level, none of these promise to have a happy outcome. Compression formats come in many varieties. In the document world, the most commonly used compression file format is known as ZIP. In use and widely available since the late 1990s, it gets its name, as most of the formats do, from the file extension it carries, in this case .zip. Another prominent type is the RAR file, RAR, which differs from zip primarily because it compresses better and can break a single RAR file up into multiple files to facilitate compliance with email or uploading file size constraints. It's much less common than zip, however, so you want to take care in terms of under which circumstances and for whom you want to use it. MP3 plays the same role, but for audio files, a document of a different type. And it's noted for its ability to maintain the quality of sound despite being compressed. For video, the likes of MP4, MPG, WMV, and AVI are among the more popular. From an organizational standpoint, PDF is perhaps the most widely used standard document format around, which is ironic because it was developed as a proprietary product by Adobe and was adopted as an official standard in 2008. That's ISO 32000-1, colon 2008 to be specific. This so-called portable document format is notable for its ability to faithfully represent documents created in pretty much any application, but to do so independent of that original application, or any hardware or operating system. Because it maintains the same page arrangement, fonts, colors, and pretty much all other characteristics of the original, and because most browsers either bake in or make easy the ability to read PDF files, with or without the official Adobe Reader, PDF is frequently the format of choice for capturing documents that will be presented on the web. XPS is Microsoft's entry into the same sweepstakes. A functional quasi-competitor to PDF, it stands for XML Paper Specification utilizes zip compression, and can support XML versioning and extensibility. It does not, however, support dynamic content, such as content contained in a drop-down menu on a form. Still, 
it's been accepted as a standard as well, in the form of ECMA 388. On the image side of the house, TIFF, the tagged image file format, is a popular lossless format that's good for archiving, because files may be edited and saved without losing compression. Tags may also be used to handle multiple images and data within a single file. File sizes can be large, however, especially for color images. Now, anyone who spent any time with a digital camera will recognize the next acronym on our list, JPEG. It actually stands for something, too, Joint Photographic Experts Group. But because it's a lossy format, it's better suited for photographs than for text or images that have to be lossless. The picture on this slide, by the way, illustrates the difference as the image has been compressed with successively higher loss JPEG compression ratios as you go from left to right. So as you can see, it's important to choose the right one. Newer versions of JPEG have addressed this, however. JPEG 2000 is based on wavelet compression and is applicable for modern digital imaging cases like digital cameras, but also pre-press and medical imaging. JPEG 2000 Part 1, which is ISO standard 15444, offers lossless and lossy compression and better image quality at smaller file sizes. JPEG 2000 Part 2, which is ISO 15444-6 for those keeping score at home, compresses scanned color documents with bitonal elements as well as images. PNG, short for Portable Network Graphics, is a bitmapped image format that employs lossless data compression. Created to improve upon and replace GIF, the graphics interchange format, as an image file format, it was designed for transferring images on the internet, not for professional quality print graphics. As such, it does not support non-RGB color spaces like CMYK, but it can be used instead of JPEG for line drawings and text not requiring higher resolutions. GIF is also a lossless bitmap image format, but a very old one in the scheme of things. Introduced by CompuServe in 1987, its support and portability made it a fixture on the early web, but its technical color limitations makes it unsuitable for reproducing photographs and other images with continuous color. It's still well suited for simpler images like graphics or logos, though, with solid areas of color. This module has explored the most common compression techniques and formats used when managing information, including ZIP, RAR, MP3, MP4 and the other video formats, PDF, XPS, and image formats TIFF, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. Having completed this module, you may next wish to review the module on the mapping of the capture process and techniques for cleaning up your shared drives and directories. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.